the new year new information new adventures and new episodes welcome to lance and creeps your real estate channel where we don't just tell you things but we also show you and i said this was last year's slogan this is season two and this time we're going to take you deep deeper into the heart of the real estate industry and today i'm here for episode two and we are going to talk about the concept of errors in the chatting process and today i'm not doing it on my own i always come with the best professionals and that is durand informatics durand informatics with Sylvia andrew you know him in our first season he was there and today he's taking me down into the bush today to do the chatting so you're going to hear from him everything about the chatting once we go into the bush we take the coordinates i will come back here and then you will hear from him so right now i'm all set i'm getting ready to go into the bush with Sovio andrew so stay tuned don't go anywhere second point yeah so we want to go to this side now yes to continue yeah. with the work yes okay continue okay. so the reason we are picking all the boundary points is because in describing a particular property for chatting um that sometimes it's possible for the property to be sharing boundary with a place that is committed and a place that is free so you want to know okay if i buy this property how many area? What is the size of the part that is free? And what is the part of the size that is committed? If it exists like that. So that's why if you, want, if you are picking coordinates for chatting, you tend to pick all the boundaries. And you'll be sure of, okay, in the paraventure, if you go to the site to do the perimeter survey, there will not be possibility of, say, because I didn't pick a particular side, I will not, the, the part that I didn't pick will fall outside the acquired place or we fall inside the visited place so that's why for this particular site we are picking all the boundaries then we chat with the coding that we picked and be sure that the whole part is free or if it has some part that are free and some part that are committed we'll be able to estimate what's the area that is free what's the area that is committed is not an easy thing and we are still in the bush still cutting looking for the points and this post pass of land is seven plus of land you can imagine the distance that we walk into the forest so you find out that this chatting process is not just as easy as you think you need to give kudos to these surveyors they are trying they are risking their lives
fair out of the forest where we went to do some work and here with me is uh, the great Sovior. He's my man anytime, anywhere, any day. And he has just taken me into the forest. We have picked up points. But right now, there are some questions that I'm going to ask him. But I will just leave this stage for him. Oh, he's the owner of this stage. He's not me. So get ready as I'm going to ask him some questions. Get out your pen and your paper and start to write. Okay? So, Sovio, the stage is yours. Thank you, sir. Sure. So, Sovio, what are the equipment needed when you want to pick the coordinates? Because I can see that you are using a phone instead of the normal um, equipment, one precision equipment that you normally use. You are the professional, I don't know it. So tell us the type of equipment you need when you're picking coordinates. So um, normally in picking coordinates, you need a GPS. Because in uh, surveying, we have orders for work. And the order for work will determine the accuracy for the work or for the job. So we have first order job, we have second order, and we have third order jobs. So Picking coordinate on sites can be classified into a third order job depending on the area and the kind of precision that you want. So we have handheld GPS that is a mobile GPS and uh, is specifically for picking coordinates and for navigation. And of course, some other people use it too, like uh, hydrographers, you know, if you are doing fishing, you can use it too. But mainly it is used, used by a surveyor in picking coordinates then as the technology advances we have some kind of phones that are equipped with gps to inbuilt and uh, the gps can work with several apps on your app store and uh, what you look out for especially when choosing the app to use is number one the number of satellites that such phone can receive because there are some times that you carry a phone to the to the site or even GPS and the accuracy there is not up to the standard. Because when you are picking GPS coordinates, you need to be sure of the accuracy of that particular point, the precision of that point at that moment you are picking it. So there are some GPS that can see several country satellites. For example, GPS I would normally say is a global positioning system. It's made by the United States of America. Then we have a uh, Galileo. Galileo is made by the European Union. Then we have uh, Beidou. Beidou is by the Chinese. Then we have uh, uh, we have another one by the Russians too. Forgotten the name. So we have like several others like that that each country they are integrating their own satellite systems too. So the more uh, satellite system your phone can read or your GPS can read, the better the accuracy of the point you are picking. Okay. Um. Now there are certain things most clients want to do themselves okay. because of technology just like you said okay. they download some apps on their phone okay. and they want to pick the coordinates themselves what are the errors when clients pick coordinates themselves uh the first error every client or let me say a non-professional is going to face when picking coordinates is a projection so for every location on the surface of the head, for every country on the surface of the head, we have a particular projection system that we use. So for example, now in Lagos State, we use a UTM system, but based on Minadatu, established by the Nigerian Institution of Surveyors and SOCON to the US Council of Nigeria. So if you download any app, naturally the app will set it to a universal coordinate system use around the world, which is different from what we use in Nigeria. So if you pick a coordinate like that, though the coordinates are normally similar, you won't notice the difference. But difference in some places can be up to like 100 meters, can be up to like 50 meters, compared to where you are supposed to pick. So the first thing they will need to be aware of, and that's why they need a professional, is that projection. And to, to learn projection, for God's sake, you have to go to the school. Because it's not a course you learn in one year or two years. We have several courses on coordinate projection only. So clients or any other person that wants to pick coordinates needs to be aware of such things. 
And even if you are sending it to your surveyor, your surveyor needs to know the projection you are picking the coordinates from. Without that, any charting done on it is void. Okay, what is your advice to those um, clients who want to go and pick so coordinate themselves or individuals who do not have the professional expertise? Um, I would not advise that you pick coordinates without uh, a professional person telling you what to do. Even if you say, okay, hello, sorry, I want to do this on site. Should I do it? So let him guide you in the process of doing it. And if your surveyor is somebody that has the technical know-how, you'll be able to control your errors from his own side, even after picking. But I would advise that always go to the site with a professional for everything you are doing so that you will not do some things that will later in the nearest future cost you a lot of money. Okay, thank you, Durand Informatics. So, when next um, we have some big projects, will you be able to do it for us? Ah, uh, sure, sure. You mean you can do a very perfect job? Accurate job. Okay, thank you. We appreciate You're you. Welcome. Thank you.